Good afternoon. You've made it to 4 o'clock on a Friday. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jennifer Meckles. 4 p.m. that 4 is, right? I know. Good, mor good morning. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Jordan Chavez. <laughs> I was going to say I'm plenty of sleep, but now being with you this afternoon. You made it. Clearly Five seconds. A little bit more sleep, right? <laughs> right now, snow is clearing out of our state. This is a live look out west. You can see the conditions there at the Eisenhower Johnson Tunnels looking pretty good after getting a lot of fresh snow yesterday. Here in the metro, some rain this morning, mostly just cloudy conditions today. Kathy, this does not feel like the Mother's Day I wanted. I know, With I dust feel. Just planting and getting outside and all the things. You and everybody else that I've heard from today, Jenny. And Jordan, we're so happy to have you mm -hmm. here and you're awake at four o'clock in the afternoon. I know, <laughs> during my nap time usually, 4 p.m. Happy to be with y'all. I love it. We'll get you some iced tea or some coffee, whatever you need. <laughs> Thank you. We'll get right on that. Yeah, Jenny, it's been cloudy all afternoon and very cool and unsettled, but not even raining now as the evening drive gets underway and in the high country all the advisories for snow have canceled out because the snow has been so light but it will be unsettled going into the weekend although it is the weekend let's remember that we have cool weather this friday evening we're tracking some showers for saturday and sunday and a little more mountain snow temperatures today a far cry from the upper 60s where we typically are this time of year 55 the best we could do in denver light winds out of the east that upslope keeping the clouds in place we're seeing the heaviest showers over south Western Colorado upper level low generating those showers with a counterclockwise flow coming up in the form of light rain and snow. We have isolated showers possible here in Denver tonight and hoping to see some clearing a little bit of clearing after midnight. So maybe that geomagnetic storm, the northern lights, there may be a small window and opportunity to see those late tonight between midnight and 3 a.m. But I'm saying there's a chance. I'm not saying it's going to be perfect. And then tomorrow afternoon, we'll be tracking those afternoon showers on a Saturday after a dry start. Mix the clouds and sun between now and dinner hour or happy hour, whatever you like to do on a Friday. And we have mid 50s for the next four hours. So outside right now, so far, so good, pretty quiet, even though it does look a little bit gloomy. Much more on the, ho on the holiday forecast coming up in just a bit. All right, Kathy, thank you. You have four right now. More than 12,000 people are without power in the San Luis Valley. This is according to the San Luis Valley Rural Electric Cooperative. At 1.37,000 people, People were affected, so progress is being made. The cooperative said heavy, wet snow trapped transmission lines operated by XL Tri-State and the Western Area Power Administration. Crews are expected to be out making repairs over the weekend. Big development today in the case of the teenagers who were accused of killing a woman by throwing a rock at her car. One of those three suspects is now the first to plead guilty in this case. Jeremy Hohola was there in court this morning as family of Alexa Bartel watched the hearing. Jeremy, he is... Yeah, today Zachary Quack agreed to plead guilty to three charges when he's sentenced in September. He faces at least 20 years in prison. A year ago, 20-year-old Alexa Bartell was driving alone in Jefferson County when a large landscaping rock crashed through her windshield. Her death shocked the community as her family continues to grieve amid the criminal case against three teenagers. They held a memorial last month. We're here today to remember Alexa amazing soul she was. Now, one of the suspects, Zachary Quack, has agreed to plead guilty to three counts. That's first degree and second degree assault and criminal attempt to commit assault. As part of his plea deal, Quack agreed to go to prison for at least 20 years. That's a pretty big deal. Uh, we're talking adult prison with adult prisoners. Nine News legal expert Scott Robinson calls Friday's development significant because that puts pressure on the two other teen suspects. Joseph Koenig and Nicholas Carroll Chick are still expected to go to trial this summer on murder charges. But this is a bit of a domino falling in favor of the prosecution. And the question is, will the other two defendants follow suit and enter guilty pleas? It really comes down to what the prosecution determines is the extent of individual culpability. It's unknown who really threw the rock that killed Bartell. But investigators say the three teens were together in seven rock throwing incidents that hurt three other people. And Quack, like the other teen suspects, is now 19 years old. The judge told him this morning, even though he agreed to go to prison for at least 20 years, the court could give him up to 32 years. So he'll find out in September 
when he's sentenced. Back to you, Jordan. All right, Jeremy, we appreciate it. Thank you. Lone Tree Police say security footage from several stores helped identify a man on parole in connection to a random murder. This happened at Park Meadows Mall last November. 73-year-old Michael Lohmeyer was found dead in his car. He had been shot. James Matthew Neal was arrested later that month in Wyoming after a high-speed chase. He had recently been extradited back to Colorado facing first-degree murder charges. New court documents show multiple stores caught Neal's truck on camera. Also, it caught him going into Nordstrom's after the shooting and buying new clothes. Court documents say Neal told a woman that he shot the man after asking him if he wanted to buy drugs. And that woman said he wasn't remorseful. Nine News Investigates found out that Neal was on parole at the time this happened, even met with his parole officer after the murder. Some patients are now getting turned away at the Rocky Mountain Regional VA Medical Center in Aurora today. That's right. The VA says staff found residue on some of their surgical equipment, and they don't know what it is. Nine News reporter Lauren Scafidi is at the VA now, where the hospital has had to reschedule or even cancel surgeries. Lauren? Yeah, for anybody who needs an emergency surgery here at the VA, they're going to get referred to another hospital. For those non-emergency surgeries, those most of them are just going to get rescheduled. Now, so far, the hospital says that they've rescheduled or referred 181 surgeries total and 52 dental appointments. Here's how it all started. The hospital says that the staff was checking their uh, surgical equipment before surgery, and they noticed some of their reusable equipment had a residue. The hospital hasn't said when staff found this, but they say they caught it before surgery, so the VA says there isn't any harm that they know of. Right now, they're still trying to figure out what that residue is and how it got there. Nine News medical expert Dr. Coley says this is alarming. She says it could be dust or something else. There's many different possibilities for what this could be. So what we worry about the most, obviously, is some sort of biological material, right? So something left over from a previous surgery or some human tissue or protein that sort of precipitated onto the equipment, that could pose an infectious risk. We might also worry about chemical residues. When we sterilize surgical equipment, we use detergents and cleaners. And if some of those precipitate any kind of salts or chemicals, that could be a particular problem as well. Mineral deposits from hard water, that could be a problem if it gets onto the equipment because it could affect the performance of equipment, especially surgical equipment like scissors and scalpels and such, which are supposed to be really precise. Surgeries that do not use this reusable equipment, those are still happening, but we have seen this happen before. That was in April of 2018. Advent Health Porter paused all surgeries because of contaminated surgical equipment. They actually sent out 5,800 letters home to patients warning that they could be at risk of infection or hepatitis or HPV. Live in Aurora, Lawrence Caffiti, 9 News. Yeah, Lauren, this is understandably getting a lot of people's attention this afternoon. We appreciate your reporting. Thank you. Well, it's not every day that you run into your idol. No, some people at the Denver <laughs> Little Raven Skate Park got a big surprise on their Friday. Of all the people to run into at a skate park, Tony Hawk posted video of himself skating around that park at noon today. Well, obviously, we sent a crew right away down there. <laughs> Our Michael Grady raced out to see if he could catch him. He was just a little too late. But Tony was already gone, yet he had still talked to a couple of kids. Like this 11-year-old who got the chance to meet him, he said Tony was super chill, even signed his board. I came out to the park and uh, I was doing my little lines and I look up and this really tall dude skated past me. I was like, is that, is that Tony Hawk? We're at Denver Skate Park and Tony Hawk showed up two days in a row and I got a board sign and he was teaching people how to like skate and stuff. He was super nice. Tony got the full Denver experience. He was posting on his social media last night. Not only did he do the skate parks, he went to Casa Of course, Bonita. you got to go to Casa Obviously. Bonita. Talk about a blast from the past. Tony Hawk, I don't know if you would recognize him as he just rolls by because I, I agree you do a double take right there saying that can't be him. There's no way, right? There's no way. I wonder what he's doing in town. Also, I feel like it's a bigger bummer for Mike Grady missing I know. him than it is for, you know, I know. our producers. Sorry, Mike. Unfortunately, we didn't get that. He tried so hard. <laughs> <He did. laughs>